All right, good morning, virtual school. So today our lesson will be on analysis. Um, this lesson will connect to the last lesson on analysis. In fact, I designed the lesson with the work you did last class in mind, um, in part uh, to address some of the misconceptions that I saw. Uh, so the objective today is to firm up our understanding of what analysis is, how it differs from summary, and how we can actually do rhetorical analysis of a text. Uh, so as we've said, analysis at the most simple level we can think of it is discussing the whole in terms of its parts, a detailed examination of the elements or structure in relation to purpose. Well, how does this differ from summary? Anybody who went through third grade will remember that summary is uh, simply restating the main points, right? Now, when a text is complex or challenging, then summary can be a powerful cognitive tool that can lead you to a deeper understanding of the ideas in that text. However, uh, summary, restating the main points, you can see is very different than uh, a detailed examination of the elements or structure in relation to purpose. Now, as we do analysis, I think it's important to keep in mind this distinction between form and content, the form and the content of a text. The content, I think, is a little bit easier. The content is simply the message of the text, uh, what the text says. The form, on the other hand, we're talking about structure, style elements, rhetorical choices, aesthetics, um, etc. So we're going to revisit the video that Maimuna shared with us last class, and I want you to think of this video in terms of form, in terms of the royal rhetorical choices, style elements, structure, aesthetics. Now that text is obviously a video. Uh, what is the form? What are the rhetorical choices, style elements, structure, and aesthetics? Well, as a video, we know that we really have two, three uh, possibilities. We have the visual, the oral, or what you hear, and the verbal, as in the, the language of the video. So when we think about the rhetorical choices, the style elements, the form, um, visually, we see a few things. Uh, a few things that we see are uh, the seaside at dawn. We see s certain shots are in slow motion, certain shots are out of focus, certain shots are in focus. We see a young hip guy. Uh, we see interesting contrasts between darkness and light in the video. Okay, here's some style choices. <clears throat> in terms of the oral, we hear, of course, background music. We hear the rhythm of the spoken word of the speaker. Uh, these are probably the main things. And then in terms of words, the one thing I've chosen to write here and to talk about is the puns. Um, so here is a list. These, these three things are basically this, the, the, the style elements, the rhetorical choices that we're talking about. But we know, uh, or the form, but we know we need to think about the form in relation to the content. We know in terms to do analysis, we need to discuss the whole or the purpose in terms of its parts or the rhetorical uh, analysis. So, if we're thinking about that, well, what is the purpose of this video? One way of thinking about the purpose of this video, uh, the way that I would, uh, that I might say it, is uh, the purpose is to highlight the social cost or the cost to society of social media uh, and being connected 24/7. That's one way of thinking about the purpose. So we have this list back here. Okay, right here. We have these list of style elements, right? How do they relate to the purpose? That's what analysis is. So, for example, when we see the seaside at dawn, why do we see the seaside at dawn? I'll tell you, it's not because the video, they just needed somewhere to shoot it and they happened to be uh, at the sea or at the water, whatever it is. Um, in fact, how does this imagery relate to the purpose to highlight the social cost of social media? Uh, well, let's think about that. The slow motion, the seaside at dawn. How is the seaside at dawn connected? Uh, seaside, we might think of nature. Dawn, we might think of light coming. Uh, light, now we're thinking contrast between darkness and light. Did you notice which scenes in the video seem to be particularly dark uh, in color, uh, in terms of light, and which ones seem to be particularly light? Uh, well, at the beginning, we see a lot of light at the seaside, right? Uh, and the darkness is these little vignettes of uh, people with their cell phones with each other. Um, the light in those videos is actually coming from the cell phone screens, right? Um, well, what is the difference? Why use light in that way? 
well, the light that we see in the, in the dawn, that's, that's a kind of uh, natural light, right? Whereas the other kinds of light are artificial light. That connects directly to the purpose, to highlight the social costs uh, of, of social media, right? And being 24-7 uh, connected to a screen. What about slow motion? Uh, maybe that relates to the purpose. We need to slow down our lives uh, a little bit. Um, why a young hip guy? Well, that could connect to audience, right? Um, when we're thinking about R, we have this background music. Did you notice there's a key point in the progress and the progression of the video where the guitar comes in? Uh, and it's the same point where the speaker says, you have a choice, right? That, that, that connects, the, the music is building, he's, he's established his case, and now he's saying, okay, what are we gonna do about this, right? Um, in the same place, you see a lot of images that are out of fo focus and they're coming into focus, right? In the same way that the, the speaker's message is coming into uh, focus at the same time, right? Um, what about the, the rhythm of the spoken word? Well, many of you guys took AP literature last year and you remember studying poetry. And one thing we know about poetry is that uh, poetry comes from the natural rhythms of nature and of life, right? Uh, so why speak, wh why use spoken word or poetry uh, in this video? Well, the, the rhythms of that, uh, uh, of the language itself and of the way it's delivered bring us back to something more natural, uh, something more authentic, perhaps, right? Uh, yeah, so let's move on from there. So we see the form and we've discussed it in terms of uh, the content or the purpose, right? How these work together. That's what we're talking about when we say analysis, a detailed examination of the elements of structure. The elements of structure are, in this case, visual, aural, and verbal, right? Uh, detailed examination of how these relate to the purpose, the purpose to highlight the social costs of social media. And that is analysis. That is how analysis really differs from, uh, from summary. So one tool we've used in class is the rhetorical triangle, right? Uh, the, the triangle where we, where, we, where we recognize who the speaker is, what the content is, and uh, who the audience is, right? Um, now as a pro tip, we can say that identifying the three elements of the rhetorical triangle is not usually the, the hardest part, but understanding the interaction between these three is where the real analytical thinking comes in, right? So when we think about that video, for example, one thing we mentioned in class, you guys mentioned in class yesterday, are the elements of youth culture, right? There's a kind of hip hop tone to it. We see that the speaker is somebody who's young and hip uh, that connects with the audience, right? Now, the audience is basically you guys, young people who use uh, social media and uh, smartphones and all the rest of it. So, in this case, the speaker, uh, the audience, and the content, we see that there's a, a relationship there, right? We see that those things uh, work together. So, for example, the, the poetry, the natural rhythms, of the language, we've already talked about that in terms of natural uh, connection. Now we're thinking of it as well in terms of a, a way of connecting with the audience. Um, one of the things about audience in the rhetorical triangle, when you are further from the target audience, the message uh, is oftentimes more difficult to understand. An example of that could be George Orwell's Politics in the English Language. When we read that, I think many of you found that, wow, this is a bit, a bit difficult to understand. Well, why is that? In part because the audience that Orwell creates in his writing is not really uh, 15, 16, 17 year olds, right? He's writing uh, to other people who understand politics, who understand linguistics, who understand the way that uh, language functions in society, right? He wasn't writing that thinking of an AP language class. When George Orwell was writing that, AP language classes didn't even exist. Uh, so, when you are further from the target audience, the message may be more difficult to understand. When you are, are the target audience, as in this video, it can be harder to see the form or the aesthetic choices. So all of you, when you watch that video, can understand what the message is, but seeing the, the form and aesthetic choices and being able to uh, think of it analytically, that is a skill that we are developing uh, in AP language class. Okay, so some expressions I saw yesterday that we need to put to death because they're not helping you. Uh, let these expressions die. They distract you from understanding purpose. 
uh, to attract the audience, to get the reader's attention, to get his point across, to make it easier to remember. We see a lot of phrases like that um, in yesterday's work, and I've seen a lot of phrases like that in past AP language classes. Uh, leave these behind. You really have to do the thinking to figure out what is the purpose of the vi video, and how do these rhetorical choices connect. Uh, these things, it's, it's true, I guess, that, that every writer or speaker is trying to get his point across, but it's so obvious that it really doesn't add much to our, uh, to our discussion. So leave these expressions behind. 7.3 FM, forward. my name is Tarek. Now listeners, you may remember not too long. So uh, as we watch this, this final video, now it's time to practice. So this is a video that Esmeri shared uh, via our Twitter hashtag. And I'd like you to take a look at it and, and do the work that we just did with the other video, right? Do the analytical work, the analysis, thinking about the form of the video first, and then ultimately taking those style elements, rhetorical choices, and relating them back to purpose, okay? Um, ultimately, you're gonna wanna think, as you can already tell, this is a YouTube video, so as a video, we're gonna have certain visual elements, certain aural elements, things we hear, as well as verbal, in other words, the language of it. So as you're watching, you're understanding the purpose, you're paying attention to the rhetorical choices, and then ultimately, I'm gonna ask you to, uh, to connect the two in an ana analysis activity after, uh, after the lesson. We had a spoken word artist by the name of Sully Brakes. Came down, dropped the live session.